Hello, my name is Melissa Wu. I will be talking about deep blood flow extraction for diffuse correlation spectroscopy at photon starved regimes using batteries. So DCS is an optical technology used to measure blood flow non-invasively. A long coherence laser is used to deliver light into the head and the laser speckle pattern is detected a few centimeters away. One to several of these speckles are sampled with a single photon detector and the temporal autocorrelation of the detected light intensity is taken. Um, this correlation has an exponential decay and the rate of this decay can be used to recover tissue blood flow. Um, in other words, slower and fa faster decays implies slower or faster hemodynamics respectively. A significant challenge in DCS is the trade-off between brain sensitivity and SNR. A detector placed closer to the source will have more light but less brain signal. Um, in this case, we will see many photon detection events. Moving the detector further from the source allows for more brain sensitivity but less light. Here, the photon detection events will be very sparse and we will have to integrate the signal for a longer period to be able to recover blood flow. Our solution to this in our lab is parallelized DCS with spat arrays. Here, instead of sampling several speckles individually with single mode fibers, we collect, collect light with a multi-mode fiber and project the laser speckle pattern onto the detector array. And the idea is to use spatial temporal speckle data to recover high speed, high fidelity hemodynamics, particularly in photon starved regimes, such as when we have very long source detector separations. So recently um, at uh, EPFL in Switzerland, in Dr. Eduardo Charbon's lab, um, SwissBad3 has been developed, which is a 500 by 500 pixel SPAD array. Um, and in total, there are 250,000 pixels with a frame rate of 0.1 megahertz and exposure time of 10 microseconds. Um, and we note that these parameters can be adjusted. The sensor operates with a rolling shutter readout and an adjustable number of readout rows. Um, and the frame exposure time is simply the number of readout rows multiplied by the row readout time, which here is 40 nanoseconds. So with less readout rows, we will have a faster frame rate and a shorter exposure, but obviously less signal. And the more pixels that are read out, we will have a slower frame rate and a longer exposure. Um, and there is an FPGA attached to the sensor, which will perform pixel by pixel temporal autocorrelations. Um, so there are two modes that a sensor can be operated with. The first where raw photon counts are directly written out to the acquisition computer, and the second where uh, onboard FPGA autocorrelations are written out. So for the photon detection, operating modality one second of acquisition will produce 1.5 gigabytes of data. Um, and a 10 minute acquisition, which is a typical measurement period many in the DCS field are used to, um, will produce uh, 0.5 terabytes of data. Um, and regardless of um, you know, what uh, computer you're using or mode you're operating, and there's a lot of data to work with, but also imagine calculating autocorrelations for thousands of SPADs, this will take a while. Um, and what we want to do is find an efficient manner of retrieving high speed, high fidelity measurements. Um, and so to address this, our lab has developed a Markov matrix model. Um, here we see two crop frames adjacent in time. The majority of SPADs here have no detection events, but um, a total of eight photons were detected in each frame. None of the pixels detected photons in both frames, with the exception of this one at the bottom here. Um, and so what we do in this case is to find a transition matrix where the rows represent a zero or one detection in the first frame and the columns represent the same in the second. And what we do in each box is tally the number of pixels which detected the corresponding events in each frame. So here most pixels detected no photons in uh, both frames and exactly seven, seven pixels detected none in the first and one in the second. Another seven detected the converse and one pixel detected photons in both frames. After this, we normalize the matrix such that each row sums to one. And we call this matrix T. Um, and then here we take the eigenvalues of T, uh, which is the scalar value lambda, which satisfies this equation with the eigenvector u. This is calculated by solving the characteristic equation of T. And if we label each of these boxes uh, for a 2 by 2 matrix, we can write out the solution as the solution to a quadratic equation. Um, and essentially, we want to know how large the off-diagonal entries are compared to the diagonal ones and the larger BMC are in this equation the bigger the difference will be between the two solutions of lambda. And so our metric is then defined as the ratio of the two eigenvalues. So just an overview of the method, here's a time trace of the sensor frames. First, we calculate the transition matrix for each frame. 
Afterward, we can sum these transition matrices across frames to a desired sampling rate or integration time. We then normalize the matrices by row and then calculate the eigenvalues and take the, uh, the ratio. Uh, we're still very much in the middle of developing this method and testing it out, but I'd like to show one preliminary result. Here we have a risk measurement at 25 millimeter source detector separation, 20 hertz integration, and uh, around 30,000 counts per pixel per second. Per, per second. Acquired with the raw photon detection event mode, um, the pulsatile blood flow here is co clearly visible. Uh, recovering BFI from the autocorrelation calculations took approximately 38 minutes, whereas we are able to recover essentially the same time trace with our Markovian method, but with a almost a factor of 8 reduction in computation time, we have yet to fully op optimize the calculation times, and so we in anticipate an even further re reduction in computation time in the future. Um, and to just compare the methods for a given integration period, for autocorrelation calculation, um, we would need all the frames in memory and perform array calculations at however many lag values are desired. Uh, with this Markov mo model, in theory, only two frames are needed in memory, although in practice these calculations are done in parallel, and we only need array calculations at one lag value. Uh, a couple of other considerations, this method can be extended to three or more frames, although eigenvalue computation time significantly increases with matrix size. We can also calculate transitions spanning more than one frame, for example, finding the difference between a frame and two frames behind, and we are investigating both of these avenues right now. In principle, this can be even computed at the pixel level, uh, mirroring what event-based sensors do, essentially only recording pixels and times with event changes. Um, this would remove the need for a lot of downstream stream processing and would significantly reduce system bandwidth uh, to potentially enable faster capture. Thank you so much for listening to my talk. Um, I would like to thank uh, all of the collaborators that made this possible.